Yes, for the release of Water Magicite. Well, it wasn't a flu, it was just uh, probably a sinus headache. It's really difficult to stream with a headache. Um. Thanks a lot, Stark. Oh, yeah. Here's a link to this. No, <laughs> Water Magicite is not tomorrow. End of the month. Hell, shit, it could be tomorrow. But I highly doubt it. One month after the release of Ur, uh, Lightning. I have to farm seven more quets. Three, I only need to do before the Water Magicite hit. But because I'm going to be using Quets during the Water Magicite, I don't need the other four until after. Because I need to get a fast act off of them to inherit on to an Everay. But because I'll have uh, Quetzalcoatl's inside my my lightning team, I won't need it on my Evray by then. So I've got time, but it's not like I expect anything to change over that period of time. So. Really would like to get this, this run at least consistent. I don't even care if it's sub-60 anymore. I just want the fucking thing dead. Because it, it takes me so long to get a single Quetzalcoatl because of all the failure runs that have to happen and b before a uh, success happens. It's really, really maddening. The amount of time that I've sunk into getting five of them. Well, King Behemoth takes more damage from Radiant Shield. The fight can only last so long if you want to do the Radiant Shield strat, but it doesn't work on Quetzalcoatl because he takes reduced damage unless you break his cap. In which case you're using a, a useless character on a, on a team. Just fucking just takes forever. I hate the reduced damage mechanic. Two levels of extra? I'm not getting two, I'm getting ten. I don't have a fast act every right now. Let's get started. And hey Jimbo, what's going on?
Yeah, I know Matumbo. That's why I just I don't have a level eight fast stacked on an Evray right now. So I would be going from zero to ten. Alright, um, so what I'm going to talk about in the stream is Magicite passives and building Magicite to fight against Magicite, and hopefully other things as well. Um, I had a wildly different version of this page up until not too long ago. Uh, I should have expected it coming, but once I saw uh, what Medin has for passives, it changed everything everything about how I planned on building my all of my Magicites. Oh, not everything. Um, fighting against uh, Quetzalcoatl and Behemoth King uh, stayed roughly the same. Actually, exactly the same. But I don't really got to talk about those much because I already talked about it. Because this was uh, something that I did a long time ago and because we knew that our, the first Magicite that we were going to be facing was Lightning. So I talked about this in a preparation months, months ago. Um, I guess we can talk about what four star Magicite teams looked like, which was uh, two Offensive Elemental, two Evrays, and a one Defensive Elemental. Um, it, it was a pretty easy formula to follow, because this ha you use this for every single team, where... Um, because Evrays have Attack Boons on them, you use a Magic Boon Evray, and two Magic Boon Offensive... So you have three magic boons on a magic uh, mage team. Um, and you end up with three on a physical team, even though three is a bit too many on a physical team because of how low the soft cap is. Uh, it doesn't matter because you, you still wanted to use Catastrophe. So you ended up with three attack boons anyway. Um, made, sure, you made sure you had at least three empowers. Use the Evray to cover holes, like precise strikes. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that later. But anyway, that that was the general makeup of the four stars, and it was pretty, uh, pretty constant. But I'm not going to get to those because that's irrelevant right now. We're going to look at the next Magicite to come up because that's what we're building five star Magicites for currently, um, and this looks. A lot more uh, complicated, not complicated, uh, time consuming than it really is. Um, because uh, I mentioned the existence of a Magicite called Medin, uh, there we go. Down here, Medin is a five star holy Magicite along with Lakshmi uh, that does Empower Holy and Surging Power. Surging Power. Um, and this is a more powerful Surging Power than the one that's currently on Evray. What Surging Power is, is the higher percentage health that is on a character, the more benefit of damage output that they get from Surging Power. Evray is a uh, level 10, which means if you are at 100% health, you get 10% increased damage. If you have a second instance of Surging Power, the effect is halved to 5%. So it would be 10 plus 5 for 15% increased damage, which is uh, incredible because uh, most of the passives in the game, like Precise Strikes and Deadly Strikes, don't provide damage buffs that large. They're quite small. Once So normally, once you passed adding Empowers to a team, which were a lot of elemental damage, uh, but once you got like three of them, then you know, you're adding you know 2% more damage. 
So what you would do is have three empowers and then use an, uh, at least two more other passives towards surging power and provide a hell of a lot of damage to the party. Well, uh, Medine's surging power is even more powerful than the level 10 on, on Everay. Uh, let's go check it just so we can make sure what exactly it is. Trusty and Leers to the rescue, as usual. You gonna let me dismiss this, or you just gonna put a, a green blob on my screen? Okay, they're gonna put a green blob on my screen. Surging power goes up to level 15. There we go, thank you. Um... So that's a huge increase over Evray. That is completely unnecessary increase over Evray. Uh, Evray was already like five star powerful. Now it's a, a level 15, which means it'll get halved to uh, a level or uh, an 8%. So having two Medines in your party is going to provide 23% increased damage as long as you're at full health. Um, so even if you're at 50% health, that's still a sizable damage increase. So Medine is is great just for that. But if you notice something else, if, if you've been farming or looked at five star magistrates at all, is that they they cut off one of the the passives and give you an inheritance slot instead. So you so you can put whatever you want in those two slots instead of being stuck with attack boon and then a free slot. So even better. Because that makes Medine better for mage teams than Everay was for mage teams. Because uh, whenever you put an Everay on a mage team, you're sacrificing not, all or, not only the Empower Holy, uh, but also the Attack Boon. So you were only using them for the Surging Power, but it was powerful enough to, to keep on using them anyway. So, we have uh, Medine to look forward to in the future, and that's what changed everything about the way I plan on building these. And it actually simplifies and makes it really easy, I think. Um, block most of this out of your mind right now. Block the Evrays, as well as this and this. What I want you to look at is strictly the first and the fifth Magisite on each team. One King Behemoth, one Quetzalcoatl. Magical team, one King Behemoth, one Quetzalcoatl. They're both the same. Uh, I it, suggest inheriting in Power Lightning and in Power Lightning on the first King Be or your King Behemoth, and I suggest inheriting Damp and Water and Health Boon on your Quetzalcoatl. Uh, and this works for both teams. So I think personally that those are the two most important Magisite to build. Um, because of what I plan on turning these teams into when uh, when Medine comes, which is one offensive, one defensive, and three Medines. We're uh, in four Cyrus running two Evrays and, uh, and another offensive. I'm just throwing out that, that third one and putting on another Holy Magisite instead. What this is going to allow is uh, ultimate customization. And that's why I built the Quetzalcoatl and the King Behemoth the way they are, because these two will be good for any team no matter what. And then using the three spots in between, you customize. What, what does the fight require? Um, and mostly what I do with the three slots right now is build to what the fight requires. So it's kind of a... It, I will revise this when we get closer to to the, the Medining. Um, but for now, it's... What we're looking at here, because uh, King Behemoth and Quetzalcoatl, and most of the Magisites, uh, 
have a single passive that not included in their mains, like Empower Lightning, etc. So you've got, you know that you've got a King Behemoth and a Quetzalcoatl. Um, on each team, you want both of them. Even if uh, Precise Strikes is on the mage team, that's that's okay because you need the Empower Lightning. So it's it's not a good idea to stack up more Precise Strikes, right? It's for balancing. Pa Do you want to make an entirely new Quetzalcoatl for um, for the other team as well? That's that's what I'm like. That's why I suggest this. You can, if if you want to go friggin' crazy and spend all your stamina over the course of an entire month on farming up the exact correct team for every single fight, you go go right ahead. I'm I am th th this <laughs> guide is not for that. Um, I purposely make these two generic magicite that will work equally as well for both teams so you don't have to level up as much. It includes two Evrays that you could, should, if you had for, you know, the capability to farm them up before, you should already have Evrays, so you don't have to level up those two slots either. So what you're actually leveling up for each, you know, each month is... One, two, and then three, but this is optional. Four, also optional. And that's kind of my point here, is that this stuff is, you know, you know, fill it up with whatever. This is my suggested stuff, and I went through, like, the AI, the AI list for the fights to make sure that you had like the right defenses for the fight and stuff. Um, but if you don't want to inherit, you know, deadly strikes and resistance moon on this King Behemoth, you don't have to. Just use a naked King Behemoth with an empowered lightning and precise strikes, and you're fine. This is this is just optional stuff. Um, the reason why it it doesn't hurt to do it is because you can always inherit uh, these passives. Onto a Medine later. Uh, inherited uh, passives in inherited slots can be re-inherited, uh, as well as the precise strikes. But all right, so I've talked about okay. Yes, another health boon would be good, but. All right, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. I understand that that would be ideal. I already went over this. Um, I went generic <laughs> for a reason. Because I want to make it easy and cost less experience to level. Um, you can't remove this damp in water from this quest. So what would you use instead? What would you suggest in order to get your, your health boon instead of another damp in water? Would you remove a dampened water from here? Even though the physical team can definitely make use of that dampened water? So now you have to make another Quetzalcoatl with two different, with two completely new inheritances. So three more leveled Magicite just to get yourself that uh, extra little bit of health instead of worrying about min-maxing a third dampened water. That's my entire point here, is this is optional. Um, I kept on with two Evrays because I think going over all the fights... It, that's, that's exactly what I just countered, Stark. It is more optimal, but I am not building these more optimally. <laughs> I'm saying that I'd rather level one Magicite instead of three. Um, anyway.
two Everays on each team because Surging Power is that powerful. And I think even when using two Everays, um, you still have enough empty slots on the King Behemoths and the Quetzalcoatls to, uh, to properly defend against what the next boss is going to do as well as, you know, have room for uh, important offensive stuff like Fast Act. Um, God, I just got sidetracked so hard. Um, okay, so the reason why uh, the inner three are built the way that they're built is uh, I've got two Everays in what I call a flex spot. The flex spot is uh, the spot that's custom tailored for that uh, that damage type. So we got a King Behemoth on the physical team and a Quetzalcoatl on the magical team. There's a pretty good reason for that is that Precise Strikes isn't useful at all for, um, for a magical team, while a second fast act is... Use, it would be useful for both a physical and a magical team, but the reason why you use a second Quetzalcoatl is because you'd rather use a fast stack than a precise strikes. Um, you could, if you wanted to chisel off yet another, uh, you could use one King Behemoth and two Quetzalcoatls for both teams because the fast stack is that good. But as Stark brings up, uh, that also gives you three dampens. And the third damp in water really doesn't do a whole lot. You're um, using the Quetzalcoatl because the damp in water at least does something while the Precise Strikes does nothing. Um, and you'll see the situation that gets reversed in later uh, in some other fights. Like we have two Famfrits on the physical fire, uh, physical water team, where we have uh, two Geoskynos on. The magical team. Why? Because Blade Ward is a hell of a lot more useful in the magical fight um, than the physical, and Spell Ward is a hell of a lot more useful in the physical feat fight. So what you're, what I was looking for when I w built all of, you know, all these fights was which of these passives is more useful for that team. That's it, and it made it pretty easy. I don't think there was any that really gave me any difficulty. Uh, so that one was was plain as day. Uh, the way that these uh, Geoskino and Famfrit, or no, um, yeah, the way Phoenix and Belias are built uh, makes defending against one damage type much more useful in one than the other. Uh, Manicorum, Mateus, uh, Deadly Strikes, that's obvious. Um, health Boon is also kind of obvious. Uh, having two Health Boons is good for either team. But health boon isn't based off the percentage of uh, your your characters. It's built. Ba it's based off the percentage of the health of your magicite. So it's a flat amount for each team. And physical characters obviously have more health than magical characters. So the percent increase of health for health boon on a mage team is actually higher than it is for a physical team. So. Again, like like it above when Fast Act is good for both teams, you could, if you want to, use two Phoenixes for both teams, because Health Boon is great for both. But I elected to go with uh, a second Belize for the physical team, just because the the deadly strikes. And remember, uh, and this is like a, a huge consideration, is this Magicite right here is, is, as soon as I get, get a hold of Medines. Um, what do you mean why Deadly Strikes over Precise Strikes? Where? When? These are the two passives that come native on Belias. I cannot do anything about that. I, I can't change this to Precise. That's why he has Precise Inherited. The uh, Bold and, in and Italicized... Word or words here are the inherits. 
these are the defaults. These you get to choose, these you do not. Pretty simple here. Two precise strikes, two blade wards. <laughs> this one is the easiest yet. The easiest yet. Uh, two attack boons for the physical team and two magic boons for the uh, for the magical team. And I haven't got to the the holy or the dark yet. Mean in the last deck. All I see is a precise strike. I don't even see deadly strikes here. I still haven't decided what to put here. The, there's a big problem with this is... Um, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll take a look at that right now because that's something we have available to us right now is uh, Evraise. And what to inherit onto Evraise? Um, you'll notice throughout the entire guide, except for here, I ignore the four star section. There we go. Spell Ward Fast Act, Magic Boon Fast Act, Spell Ward Blade Ward, Magic Boon Spell Ward, Fast Act, don't know, Fast Act Magic Boon, Fast Act Spell Ward, Fast Act Magic Boon. If you've been counting, um, that's four passives for four Everays. And I m made sure to use this Magicite right here to kind of be the customize. Because I didn't want to like force people to make a lot of Evrays. I like I'm an Evray freak. And I'm going to be a Medine freak even more uh, when they come out. Uh, I do have four Evrays at the moment and I plan on making a fast act. A magic boon, a spell ward, and a blade ward every, and they will have a place on every team until they eventually inherit their um, their passives onto Medines. <coughs> so, not the previous team, but the previous of the previous team. Oh, because there's two precise strikes already on King Behemoth. You don't want to use a third precise strikes because. It's not. A, it's a 25% effectiveness at that point, while Deadly Strikes is 100%. And uh, the two Precise Strikes automatically gives you 15% crit rate. So if you have any other crit rate on your characters, and you do, there's a hidden rate, even if you don't have... Um, even if you don't have any buffs on the team, you do have a hidden crit rate. Uh, then... What, what do you get? 3% extra crit from uh, a Precise Strikes, or you get 10% increased crit damage. Uh, base rate changes uh, depending on what weapon you're using, Rainmaker. If you have a Fist weapon equipped, I believe your base rate is higher. That's uh, min-maxing knowledge from two years ago when we had uh, really no other ways to, to, to crit. So, and when soft cap, uh, attack soft cap was like in the 500s and we were just blowing past soft cap because of Ramza's shout. It's like, how else do I increase my damage? Because I don't want to add any more attack anymore. Uh, fist weapons, and uh, there was an accessory that increased your base rate. The champion belt was a four-star Final Fantasy VII accessory. Oh, that's that's a blast from the past. Um,
What else to talk about here? They're all so generic. Like, every single team, like, you, if you make one team, you're like, oh, well, I know exactly how to make all the others. Like, I'll, I'll use the, the physical water team, or the physical lightning team as a, as a guideline. Quetz, damp, and health boon. And power lightning and power lightning. A flex slot to to custom tailor to the fight. And Evray's to tailor. You need to use a, a magic boon on one Evray for the magical team. It's the unfortunate part about them not having a or having a, a slot sacrifice to attack boon here. Um and then go on to the next. Geo Skyno, Power Water and Power Water. Fram Fam for it, Dampen Wa Fire Health Boon. Do the exact same thing here. Have a a flex and two Evrays. Oh, because Spell Ward and Blade Ward are taken care of here, that's why I I'm having so much trouble figuring out what to put here. Because... Remember, my four passives for my Evrays are Fast Stack, Spell Ward, Blade Ward, and Magic Boon. Obviously, I'm not going to use Magic Boon here, so... <laughs> I'm just probably going to use, um... Probably use Magic Boon. Or, no, I'll you'd probably use a, another Blade Ward. Or another Spell Ward, whatever. I'm not inheriting an entirely new Evray just for a single fight. Next, Belias and Power Fire and Power Fire. Dampen Ice, see Spell Ward instead of Health Boon. It's because Health Boon is base on Phoenix. And the Magical team already has two Health Boons. So we want Sp Spell Ward instead. And that's the only one where that happens. Everyone else is dampen health boon, dampen health boon, dampen health boon, dampen health boon. Um, I make sure to put at least one fast act on every team, because fast act is awesome. It uh, really sucked back in the three star era because five percent was pretty ineffective, but uh, four star fast act became good, and five star fast act becomes even better. Uh, it's a 10% cast time reduction. Uh, if I don't overwrite it and before then, Rainmaker. I probably won't. Yeah, well, yeah. Unless you have a fast act. I don't have a current fast act every and that's what's going to allow me to give me a little flexibility. But I plan on having a fast act by this fight. Yeah. So I will have a magic boon, a fast act, a blade ward, and a spell ward. So I actually won't have a precise strikes. I'll have overwritten it. By him, by him, by then, I believe. So, spell ward or blade ward? Because uh, these. Five star spell ward and blade wards. Those are what I'm waiting for to overwrite. What my current every stuff. Uh, if if that's a suggestion I can give is don't level up four star magicite for anything other than empower or dampen. Uh, empower water and damp or empower element and dampen element uh, are the the exact same for five star and four star and. It takes the same amount of experience to level up 5-star and 4-star Magicite. So if you already have 4-star Magicites pre-leveled, or almost level 99, uh, you can go ahead and finish those because those can be inherited for their level, you know, 
your level 15 or whatever, level 15 empower or level 10 dampen. Um, and it will be the same thing as if you had leveled up a, a five star Magisite from, from scratch. Do I have a Necrophobe with double dampen holy? I will. Um, currently, my Necrophobe is only level 80. So, no, I don't have it with an Inherit yet. But I will. Because I'm going to need it for the Holy. If uh, if we follow the schedule that JP got, um, Holy Magicites are going to be the first ones. And then it's going to be dark one month later. Which means... Uh, kind of like what with what happened with the Lightning Magicite, where we're using 4-star Magicite to, to defeat them. We're going to need to use 4-star Magicite to defeat Lakshmi and Nadine. For the corridors of trial now, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine corridors of trial being that hard. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to use four star magicite again because every one of these is next in line, you know. You defeat Phoenix and Belias, and you get Phoenix and Belias for tackling Manicor and Mateus. Well, that ends uh, at Earth when we do the full circle, because Dark and Holy oppose each other, and we don't, we're do not we not going to have uh, access to either of those. Dark, at least, we will have access to Lakshmi and Medean for. That's why I've got them down here. Uh, this... I hadn't seen the fights when I, when I made this, so I didn't... Uh, I didn't fill in the four star that we're going to need. Um, but I assume it's going to include a lot of Hades. Hopefully not any dragon zombies. Two Evrays, of course. Thank goodness. Love using a power Holy Magicite against Holy Magicites. Makes all the sense in the world. Um, yeah, I'll get that. I'll get that done. And eventually, I will erase these three lines on every list and replace them with three Medines. Uh, I do have a, a little idea of what it's going to look like. My goodness, got it, get out of here. Oh no, you can actually zoom. All right, good enough. Uh, let's say uh, the current decks that we're building right now. Behemoth King. And Quetzalcoatl. They will be unchanged. So dampen, health boom. Behemoth King two times in power. Then Medine one, <laughs> Medine two, Medine three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna farm so many Medines. So what are we trying to accomplish with these three Medines? Um, there we go. Is what deck? Oh, in anticipation of four six star? Well, no, not really. It's more anticipation of I'm using an elemental team. I am in the Final Fantasy VIII Torment right now. Uh, my entire team does ice damage. So I'm going to use... a Manicor, Mateus, and Medine team.
Well, it, it is, but you can always swap them out. And that's the, that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up in an indirect way, is that you can swap this out. Like, say the boss doesn't deal that kind of damage, you can just use another one. That's why I like uh, solo stacking these two Magicite, because that makes them interchangeable. I uh, have no idea, Glowing Dragon. You know, all of a sudden you're facing a, a boss where you're dealing ice damage, but the, the boss does... Uh, ...fire damage instead of wind damage. You don't have to use... You don't have to use Mateus for his damp and wind. You can use somebody else. You know, does fire damage? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Vampirate. And, uh... And mana core together for empower ice and dampen fire. And that's a really big reason why I made these the way they are, because I don't want to I, I like this Magicite being for the Magicite fight. Where I like this being more general purpose, I am dealing this elemental damage. I'm dealing I, I'm a hybrid team. I'm got uh, Zell on my team and Squall. This, again, Final Fantasy VIII Torment. Um, so I'm dealing both ice and fire damage. Okay, well, I will use my three empower ice mana core to help out Renoa, Laguna, Squall. And I'll also bring the three empower fire Belias to, to make sure that Zell is properly empowered. Yeah, and that again, that's another beauty of Medine is ultimate customization. What what is the current fight that I'm uh, you know going against? Uh, these three on each team are built to be a counter of the Magicite, but they could also they 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 could always be uh, subbed out for you know whatever if you're fighting a different type of fight and using elemental damage and want to use something else. You know, use your F rays according to the fight that you're defeating and you know, maybe you don't use your second Belias, you use, you know, a different element because you're using a multi elemental squad. That's why I really gotta emphasize that these are these are the important ones. Because they are useful for Magicite, they're useful for Torment, they're useful for all content where you're dealing elemental damage, or taking elemental damage. Any questions while I try to think of something else to say? It didn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, I, again, it's just because these teams are... They, they follow a, a pattern. All of them. And it's pretty easy to figure out where to go from after you got your two... Fast Act is awesome, by the way. Don't leave home without it. It's hard to put into words the way that these teams are built. So when I link people to this site, or other people get linked to it, um, I feel weird because just looking at this team doesn't really tell the whole picture of what I'm trying to say.
Sounds great. Honestly, with these three, go nuts. So if you wanna, if, if you can farm King Behemoth, but you can't farm Quetz, uh, you know, make, make more King Behemoths. You can use four star dampen. Because it's not that bad. Four stars aren't that bad in the dampen slot. What will come back to bite you, uh, and that's something I haven't brought up yet, so it's good that it is being brought up, is that you do want at least one of these, and that's why, again, reason why to make one of each. Um, where are you? Yeah, yeah there you are. Is there uh, their actual abilities? How many F raises optimal? As many uh, F raises there are passives in the entire game. That's that's optimal. Do I suggest doing that? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, so Quetz and Behemoth King are very different entries. Are four star worth keeping for their entries? Uh, no, unless your name is Unicorn. Until Lakshmi comes, Lakshmi is an improved improved version of Unicorn, uh, and Unicorn's even a three star. Mm, any of the others? I don't know, not really. I'm going to get rid of all of them. But anyway, Behemoth King and uh, Quetz are physical and magical. Behemoth King physical, Quetz magical, obviously. Um, and these same overflow mechanics that you're playing against right now with Behemoth with both of them is uh, exist all throughout Five Star Magicite. And what is nice about these Magicites is one single attack capped at 100,000 damage. One group attack capped at 100,000 damage. And their basic attacks also break the damage cap. So you can use your Magicite in the fight to help you out with those mechanics. Um, the problem is... They're, one's completely physical and one's completely magical. So it's not like you can bring Be uh, Behemoth King and expect to break the damage cap against the boss that, you know, takes 66% off of all physical damage in the fight. Yeah, it's... Honestly, with every, it's up to you. Four is my sweet spot. Here you can see uh, their Magicite skills. You see this skill right here, capped at 100,000, capped at 100,000. Uh, at level 99, uh, Behemoth King and Quetz are guaranteed to use this attack every single turn. Medine comes with Empower Holy and Surging Power. That's it. It's just a better version of Everay. So you take off that attack boon and add a, an Inheritance slot instead. So you could... Oh yeah, I was actually in the process of doing that. Medine won. This is for a physical team. Attack boom. All right, well, two times attack boom. I'm going to make a Medine with two times attack boom. I'm going to make a Medine with two times magic boom. Those are obviously going to be highly specialized for, you know, the teams that they're going to be on. Uh, Behemoth King has precise strikes. Quetzalcoatl has fast act. Um... You've got four passives here. It's 
to just go nuts with. That, like, how to build Medines and how to kind of not go crazy and not have to make too many. So these two Medines right here um, work on a bunch of different teams. I have not made that yet. I'm going to have to make an entire, like, Medine guide, I think. After some some serious shower thinking. Apparently, I don't like eyes. Well, let's let's do a test test scenario. Behemoth King has, uh, by default, Precise Strikes. Quets, by default, Fast Act. I think uh, from the point where we get Medines forward, we're going to have so many flex passive slots that I think it makes sense to have every single team have two Fast Acts. I didn't do it for a lot of these teams, for physical, because it was hard to, like, find room for them. But let's say we make another generic Medine, or this is a specialized Medine for uh, physical teams. This is going to be generic. Fast act for a second fast act. We could go health boon, so every team every uh, team has a second health boon. That's not a bad play. It's better than putting you know precise strikes on here because obviously that makes this a a physical only Medine. I suppose that that probably makes the most sense, right? It's because Medine's very flexible. It is worth it. Uh, surging power 15 is... Uh, that would be the base. Then it would be surging power 8. And then it would be surging power 4. So the last one provides 4. It's still... That's still 4% extra damage. For... Uh, for 4% extra damage at 100% health. Um... You know, you know what you could do is instead of using a third Medine, I haven't seen their passives yet, but I'm willing to bet that one of these is like a Hades. Arc and Death Gaze. And you could include a Hades in that third slot instead of a, a third Surging Power. Would be functionally the same thing, because who cares about Empower Holy, Damp and Dark, you know? Um... That's not the whole, that's not the point at all. Um, it's all about the, the surging power. So why use a third surging power when you can use one of whatever it is that Hades has? Yeah, still don't have any passive, any information on Ark and Death Gaze, unfortunately. But because we got a, a, a Medine with surging power, I have... I'm pretty confident that we're going to be getting a... What do we got? Hand of Vengeance. So 
So maybe maybe we don't go too Medine crazy. Maybe it's Hades one instead. Because I'd rather have, you know, a hand of vengeance instead of a third surging power. But um, when it comes to the Medine and Hades balance, uh, not Hades, but wh whichever Magicite becomes Hades. Let's see. Medine is the physical, right? And Death Gaze will be the physical. So it'll be Death Gaze. Let's, let's assume for the sake of this that it's Death Gaze. The reason why I use two Medines and uh, one Death Gaze instead of vice versa is because um, it doesn't matter what stage of the game you're playing, it is more beneficial to have your, your characters have more health than less. So you're always going to be aiming to, to have your, your team have more health, unless of course you're using uh, a last stand strategy where everyone's at 1% health. Then load up, load them up. Use three death gazes and get a shit ton of damage from Hand of Vengeance. But that's that's a, a niche scenario. I'm, I wonder what I, what, would I, what I would put in these two slots. I suppose it depends. I'd have to look at all the Magicites and their default passives and try to create combinations to... that complement them. Like Behemoth King is Precise Strikes. And we have a fast act here. Play word spell word. It's pretty simple. Got two fast acts, two health boons, play word spell word, three empowers. Now, uh, I would definitely make a... for physical teams. Not every. There's, uh, there's a lot of bosses that only deal one damage type. Especially Torment bosses. There's, it's a couple. Uh, one that immediately jumps to mind is uh, Nox Suzuku. Only does magical damage. Or bosses like Genova, whose only physical damage comes from the tentacles. And if you take care of the tentacles fast enough, then you're not worried about physical damage over the course of all of the fight. I think that would be a situation which you would default to the to the more offensive passives. Obviously a mage team can't use this. A mage team would gain barely any benefit to any offensive capabilities from these two slots. So that would be the mage team special. Now it's the mage team special.
Optional. Oh, yeah, I like this. Death gazes. Or it could be a Medine. I don't It doesn't matter. How you, however you want to build. Who you want to put what on. But you can make specialists. <laughs> Bald. I think I will. That sounds like something I would do. That's not that bad. I mean, we made, or I made four F rays. So this is six? That's, that really just isn't that bad. Seven, not six. Okay, seven's getting up there. But I'll do it. I was prepared to do more. I got my shower thoughts over, over and done with on stream. 